Welcome to Mel Woods, where over the past month, Matt Beard's team have been making this place their new home and preparing for the start of a new WSL season. Pre-season is over now, and as that opening league fixture against Arsenal at the Emirates draws ever closer, we are with the team for the lowdown on their preparations and thoughts on the season that lies ahead. And joining me overlooking these fantastic training pitches you can see in the background is Tash Dowie, or to be more precise, club ambassador Tash Dowie. She's got a new title. Has it sunk in yet? Absolutely not. <laughs> it sounds amazing when you say it. No, it hasn't. It's, you have to kind of pinch yourself when I got offered the opportunity to be an ambassador of the club. Firstly, it's an honour. You know, it's my team, it's the team that I support and had my most successful years as a player. But I also feel a massive responsibility as mm. well to, you know, wear the badge, you know, with pride uh, and to give back now, you know, not as a player anymore, but as an ambassador. And I'll be getting involved with the foundation, with the academy, with the women. You know, I just cannot wait to get started. Well, I'm sure you will be absolutely wonderful. In terms of your career, obviously you're someone who's played football all over the world really but I think I'm right in saying Liverpool feels like your spiritual home so how does it feel to, to be sort of committing to spending the next phase of your life here on Merseyside? I think that's a big reason to be honest I think if I hadn't finished my career last year at Liverpool I would have carried on playing because I felt good you know I feel fit but it just felt right the time felt right and to be at Liverpool to finish my career here in front of the fans the team that I support and now then to be able to carry on my journey representing the club you know it's just it's almost like the perfect scenario for any player you know to finish their retirement but then to be able to continue staying in the game at the club they love and sadly you've just missed out on training here at Melwoods yeah. every day but what a fantastic facility this is to, to set the girls up for the new season yeah I think that's probably the only regret sometimes <laughs> is when I've come in now and seen these facilities I think oh wow the opportunity to play here and I think it's so important that the girls take advantage of this and I've said this to them myself is that don't have any regrets now you know you have everything here to become a better player to become a better team there's no excuses anymore you know and I think it just shows you know the way the women's game's going but also the investment into the women's team now at this club you know it's a game changer for me I think they're going to attract a lot more players when they come here and see these facilities and I was here 12 years ago when I played at the club and and it really has changed and it's incredible and I'm so happy to see them here. What about the WSL this season? Because it is evolving and improving all the time and Liverpool need to do that as well as an individual team. What kind of challenge do you think they will face this season? It's going to be huge. I think every year it's getting harder and harder. And if you look at the Women's World Cup and, and just the quality that was shown there, and then you look at the signings that teams have made this season, you know, throughout the whole league, you know, big names are coming to this league now. It's the best league in the world. And I actually think, I'm excited for Liverpool. I've watched them during their pre-season. You know, they've come up against some top opposition, PSG, Atletico Madrid, City, Arsenal. You know, normally, probably, they would look to play teams that maybe they could beat to build confidence going into the season. But this season, this pre-season, they've really gone for it. And their performances have been really good. I think the players as well that they've brought in have gelled really quickly. And speaking to the girls, you know, we still meet up for our coffees. You know, they say there's a real good vibe, you know, around the camp. Having beat Leicester as well last game, I think that will give them a lot of confidence now because it's a tough start to the season. OK, yeah, we're going to be chatting much more about the challenges ahead for the team a little bit later on in the show. First up, though, Tash has been catching up with one of the team's longest serving players. Here is what happens when Tash met Taylor. Nice to be here. It feels so weird being interviewing you, seeing as I was your teammate last year. I know. But firstly, the most important question I think everyone's going to want to know, having lost the funniest player from the squad in the summer, you know, who's bringing the banter, who's bringing the Tash talks this season? Um, do you know what? We were speaking about it the other day and we was like, we was all talking to some of us as a group was like, Tash needs to be here. <laughs> this is a Tash talk right now. Thanks. But to be fair, no, the girls are great, obviously, with the new girls that come in as well. Um, I'd say 
Tash Fint as well. She's nice. also another Tash. She's uh, maybe it's in the name. She's also, <laughs> she's also funny as well. But yeah, I think all the girls are great. It's a great laugh of all of them. Yeah, and you obviously mentioned Tash Flint, a new player. There's been loads of changes in the summer, new faces. Like, how have the new girls bedded in? You know, have they fitted in well? Yeah, definitely. I think you know what we're like as a team, and we're quite a tight group anyway. So, whoever that's coming in, we try to welcome them as soon as possible. And yeah, it's like they've been here for ages already, um, even though it's been a few weeks. But no, I think you can see, really see the progression um, on the pitch as well. And for the way that we want to play, they're really fitting in with it. And I think off the pitch as well, yeah, a great group of girls. Like I said, it feels like they've been here for ages. So obviously we're at Melwood Training Grounds. Yeah, I came here 10 years ago when I first played for Liverpool and it's changed a lot. But how does it feel, you know, driving through the gates and actually being at Melwood at this historic place? It's great, honestly. Like, I didn't know what to expect and the fact that this is a training facility for us and they've provided this for us. And I think it just shows where the women's league's going and where the women's game is going and for Liverpool itself as well. But yeah, no, it's, it's great just... Just everything is so, like the quality about everything, like the pitches, the train, the changing room, we've got a sauna in the changing room. For example, recovery, we have ice baths and the gym is amazing as well. And I think it's just little things like that really add into, into the game and into your daily routines and, as well. And even the food, for example, yeah. lovely. <laughs> I know, I was devastated <laughs> when I saw that. <laughs> it's so nice, but again, it's like, it's exactly what we need to fuel us, to prepare us for these games and for the season nice you know I know as a player and as a team you would have set yourself targets this year where do you see yourself this season finishing we definitely want to be in the top half this year I think this team can go push forward even more and with the quality that we've got in the team and the way that our pre-seasons went as well with our performances I think you can really see that and you can start to see it as how we're performing as well we've set those those foundations as a team and going through those conversations with Beardy as well and where we want to be and how we want to succeed this year and I think everyone's on the same page so it's really nice to oh, see. Cool. I'm excited. Now you were a regular starter last year, you know, 90 minutes pretty much every week, vice captain as well. Obviously with Neve getting injured, like potentially you could be captaining the team come the start of the season. What are your individual goals this year? There's no guarantee that you're able to that you're going to be starting every game. So for me, training hard, making sure that I'm proving myself and proving that I do want to be that starting player. Um, but yeah, for me, I think it's just not putting any pressure on myself. I obviously want to break through on the international terms as well and being able to play for England and Jamaica as well. But yeah, I think personally for me is just to play my heart out every single game and be more involved, get some more assists as well, so yeah. Like it. Yeah, and obviously looking to the start of the season, tough start, Arsenal away at the Emirates and then Aston Villa at home. The one that I've got my eye on though is definitely the derby, 15th of October at Anfield. Potentially you could be leading the team out at Anfield, you know, how does that make you feel as a player? It's so hard to describe because obviously the last time we played there it was just such a surreal feeling, like walking out I think and just that support that you could see, it was crazy. And yeah, to be able to lead the team out at Goodison as well, that was such a great feeling. And to be able to maybe do that again this year, I think, yeah, it's gonna be, yeah, it's gonna be amazing. And I think when it happens, I will really take it, take it all in. Yeah, well, look, I'm gonna be your number one fan <laughs> this year. Don't miss me too much. We'll definitely have some more Tash talks, but no, best of luck this season. Thank you. Yeah, Taylor Hines speaking to Tash there ahead of the new season and obviously you'd anticipate she will be wearing the captain's armbands against Arsenal due to that, that really unfortunate injury picked up by Neve Fahey in pre-season. Firstly, before we speak about Taylor, how, how big a loss is the loss of Neve? It's huge, you know, Neve is the captain of the club. She's such a big personality, you know, on and off the pitch. So experienced as well, you know, she's won everything in the game. So it's massive, you know, but I also think that, unfortunately as well for her last season, it was a similar case towards the end of the year. You know, she was out for a bit of a period. So I think 
even though we don't want her to be injured, the team are also maybe used to her maybe not being on the pitch and Taylor did step into that captaincy role towards the end of last year. So I think they're prepared for it, but oh, I was devastated when I saw her go down in the friendly. Yeah, obviously wish Neve all the best, fingers crossed, a, a speedy recovery. But as you say, Taylor does have that experience of wearing the armband and, and wore it really well last season. What, what qualities do you see in her that, that make her a, a potential future permanent captain maybe? Yeah, I think it was big for her because if you look at the team, there's so many leaders in this team mm. and the likes of Gemma Bonner who's been captain before and you know for Taylor to then step into that role you know it's probably quite daunting for her because I don't think she's ever been a captain before but she did really well you know I think the most important thing with Taylor is she's not a really loud you know character she's, so she's not a captain that's going to talk massively on the pitch but you know she's someone that she's quite a personal person so she'll go around make sure everyone's okay you know she's always fit which I think is important as a leader you know she pretty much played every game last year 90 minutes as well so you can rely on her on her for game time and I think she really embraced that captaincy role you know developing her as a player and, and like you said I think she she did it really well and again this year she's going to be called upon and she even said she set herself even more targets this year so yeah no best of luck to her absolutely and obviously it is a big task to wear it against Arsenal always one of the the top teams in the WSL aren't they what kind of a challenge are we anticipating from them and how will Matt approach this game it's going to be tough isn't it you know I've got good memories at the Emirates when we beat them 4-0 away but you know they're a different breed now you know and they'll be hurting having get gotten knocked out of the Champions League but the signings that they've brought in I think they'll be the team competing for the title with Chelsea this year you know the home crowd is always big but I'm really confident for this Liverpool team I think that their pre-season I've been really impressed you know having played top teams like PSG like I said earlier Atletico Madrid these are type, the type of standards that Arsenal are you know Man City Arsenal and we've only been losing by one goal here or there and obviously beating Leicester last game will give the girls lots of confidence um, so you know I'm full of confidence I think they'll go there with no fear you know they've got nothing to lose Arsenal will be the favourites especially at home as well and you know they had a good start last season against Chelsea you know beating them 2-0 at home why can't they go away to Arsenal and do the same this season okay it's a tough opener but Tash is fancying it I think okay we are going to continue our build up to the new season after the break with much more from the first team and from the boss as well Matt Beard is going to join us see you soon Yeah, welcome back to Melwoods, where we are here looking ahead to the new WSL season. Now, before the break, you heard from Taylor Hines. Next, we're going to talk about the goalkeeping position, and there's going to be a bit of interesting competition there this season, isn't there? There is. You know, I've played with both keepers. I played with Tegan, actually, in Australia for Melbourne Victory, and obviously Lawsy, you know, my old teammate course, at Liverpool. Of course, and, and it's good, you know, and Faye as well, you know, an up-and-coming keeper that when she got her chance last year, she really took it. So it's really three spaces up for grabs. Um, but for me, I think it's what maybe Lawsy needed, you know, that real competition now, you know, someone that's an international player, plays for Australia, was Australia's number one until she obviously got concussion, but she's now back just been to a World Cup and from what I've heard I think it's been really good you know it's really pushed Lawsy now so she's had a really good pre-season she's up to her game and then Tegan's coming obviously a big character I know Tegan she's a confident player and she'll be wanting to come here and be number one as well and that's what players want we want competition all the time you know we don't want to be complacent and feel comfortable and I think it's a great thing for Liverpool to have two or three keepers with such mm. quality. Yeah, it'll be a great battle, won't it? OK, well, it is Rachel Laws who we caught up with recently. Here is her thoughts on the team's approach to this new season. Can you articulate what difference it makes to you as, as professional athletes that you have this dedicated home with loads of history? And like you say, you're hoping to make that history for yourself now. But can you put into words how much of a difference that makes to the girls? I think it makes a big difference. I think, you know, coming from Sola when we were at Tramia, um, to then go into the academy in AXA, to then come in here. It's just, it's a new level for us, you know. It's, you know, when I started playing football, God, professional football, six, seven years ago now, um, I never dreamt that I would have a place like this to call me home. Um, you know, the gym, the facilities we've got here, the canteen, you know, something as small as the food you eat to refuel is so, so important, but we probably haven't realised that till we've actually had it. Um, and I think them little things go a long, long way with us. You're perfectionist though, aren't you? That brings with it the pressure to get better yeah. year on year and, and the results and the league stand and everything else. You put that pressure on yourselves as a group of players. Absolutely. And I think, you know, we're not just settling for 
making up numbers in this league. We want to compete. You know, we've had a we had a meeting last week and we kind of set out our aims and objectives for the season. We're not just yet to make up numbers. We're, we're here to compete. That's that's where we want to do. We're Liverpool Football Club. It's it's a worldwide club. We wear that badge on our chest for pride, and we go into every game wanting to win. Same in training, it's so competitive at the moment and I think you know that little competitive edge in training, we are taking it into games now, which I think is really important. But yeah, like I said, we're not here to make up numbers, we are here to compete and a facility like this can only bode well for us in the future. And the standard of the squad, are you seeing that increase now as well? You've got competition for, for the goalkeeper's position. This is all good news, isn't it, for, for this current squad? Oh, absolutely. And I think, you know, if, if you're happy and you're, you're comfortable, you're probably in the wrong job or you're, you're probably ready to retire. That's how I look at it, certainly. And I think, but it, it, all over the squad, we have competition. And I think if you're being pushed, you, you can only get better and you only better yourself. And I think that, again, that's how I'm looking at it. You know, Tegan's come in to push me and I've come in to push her. And I think it only bodes well for then stepping across the line, whoever plays on a Sunday, whatever date may be. You know, in, in training, you've, you've had to perform well to, to start in, the, in that team on a weekend. And, and that goes, you know, from 1 to 11. That's not just me. He's brought in very good people, but very good players as well. Um, you know, the people side of it is great because obviously we all get on. We are a very close group. Um, but as players, we needed competition and we've certainly got that this year. How much excitement about the season ahead then, getting ready for, for, for the real start? Yeah, exciting. I think the word comes to mind for me. It's again, we want to compete with them teams at the top. You know, going into the season after on the back of four or five very good games, we had obviously the games in France as well against two oppositions that we would never ever come across in England. So I think they would they will bode well for us in the season as well. And um, just different challenges. You know, you come up against City, but they're totally different to Atletico or PSG. And I think you know the more challenges we come across in pre-season, it sets us up well for going into the season. You know, if we come across them challenges, then hopefully we're ready. We're ready to compete and perform. Yeah, Rachel Law's insisting this team is here to compete and not just make up the numbers. And our numbers have grown here on the show as Matt Beard joins us now. Matt, you're in your new home. How have these past few weeks been for you? Yeah, no, they've been great. It's uh, you yeah, know, it's an amazing facility and. Um, we're very lucky to be here. I've said before about obviously the history um, with Melwood and Liverpool Football Club and we have an opportunity now to create our own history uh, on the women's side. Absolutely and some great news for yourself as well with a new contract. I presume that was a, an easy decision to stay. Yeah, no, for sure. I've, um, I've been very happy since I've been back. We're sort of at the start of what I feel is an exciting project and being at Melwood you can start to see um, everything come into, come into life and um, really happy here the family settled so it was a no-brainer. Beardy, nice Hello. to see you. <laughs> no, you've had a solid pre-season, I've been following the team and yourself and tough opposition that you've been playing. How do you feel pre-season's gone and the new players, how have they bedded in? Yeah, I said to the girls before the Leicester game that um, We've, we've really tested ourselves with the teams that we've played. You know, we played Man United, Man City, Madrid, PSG, all world-class teams in, in club football. Um, and we wanted to take ourselves out of the comfort zone. And I think we've really good at given a good account of ourselves in the games. I think that for, the thing for me is a consistency in the performance level. Uh, so where you're being challenged tactically, it does put you under a little bit of stress. So we've, uh, we've been pleased with with where we are. The new players have been, have been great, they've settled in really well. But it's been a good pre-season for me because apart from three players, I've had everyone in really from the start, apart from Sophie coming in late. So we've really done a lot of tactical work. Um, so we're, we're pleased with, with the understanding. We know it's going to take a little bit of time. We know the Super League's unforgiving, so we don't have a lot of time. But um, the key thing for me was performance level and I've been pleased with performance levels. I think it's really important, like you said, about having the whole squad and that's something I think the team suffered with last year. Injury-wise, no one wants to talk about it, I know, but obviously <laughs> Faye with her ACL, it's sad yeah. news. How is Mia and Neve doing with their injuries? Yeah, Neve six to eight weeks. Um, Mia's fine now, it was just a bit of a sprain on the shoulder. Um, so she's back in training. Um, Faye, obviously, we're devastated for. I mean, it was... Normally ACLs are where no one's around you. This was an impact. But Faye's got such a laid-back personality. She just takes everything in her stride. So I'm confident post-op she'll fly through the rehab. Yeah, absolutely. Wish them all the best. Uh, talk to us about the WSL this season because last campaign, seventh, a, a solid season overall. What kind of a challenge are you expecting this time round? It's going to be tougher. I think if you look at all the teams that were in and around us last year, um, they've really strengthened. Um, so the competition gets 
stronger and stronger each season. I feel we've recruited well, we've added depth to the squad, lowered the average age of the squad as well. We're trying to build a team that we want to grow over the, the next coming years. We want to compete. We, f we was one of two teams last year that, was only, that beat the top four. Um, in Chelsea and Man City, Villa were the only other team to do that and I felt probably apart from Man United away we really g gave a good account of ourselves in them, in them games so look we, we, we want to try and break into that top five that's our ambition you know minimum this year we want to improve on last year definitely people keep talking about the away record so that's obviously something we want we want to get sorted and it'd be great if we could do that at the Emirates eh? but um, but no listen we, we want to continue to improve and you know, the squad that we've built we want to be competing on all fronts in all competitions and the derby against Everton at Anfield Beardy going to be a good game? Yeah, of course. It was a great uh, atmosphere last year. Obviously, the result wasn't what we wanted, but I feel we can draw on that experience last year. And I think if you look at, we played at Villa Park, we played at, uh, obviously, Anfield, Goodison Park last year, whereas previously it would only have been Anfield. Obviously, we've been in Championship for two years. So we can draw upon a lot of uh, the experience and pressure that we found ourselves on that night and hopefully uh, put that right, but now it's, it's another great occasion for us and we're really looking forward to it. It's the, the key question, I suppose, for, for every manager, but how do you get that improvement? Is, is recruitment the key that you mentioned there? Well, being at Melwood is, is a big part of that. I think if, um, if I go back to when we was at Solar, you know, we had everything that we needed to function, but you just didn't have the space to do half the things that you wanted to do. So the training facility, the nutrition, the recovery that we have here in comparison to solar is, is, is second to none. So the improvement, yes, you need to improve the team. You constantly need to keep improving your 11. You need to keep creating competition for places, which means in turn, the standard in training uh, improves because no one's guaranteed to play. Well, there's some many, many exciting times to come this season. Can't wait to see how the team go on this Sunday at the Emirates. A massive thanks to Matt for joining us and, of course, good luck to the team for the season ahead. Remember, you can catch up on highlights from every single LFC women game this season. They are on LFC TV and LFC TV Go as well. For now, though, from us here at Melwoods, it is goodbye.